Hello friends, welcome to Tharun IS. Today we will be discussing editorial analysis of 15th of November, November 2022. So let's start uh, with the topic. The topic which I have taken is uh, private climate financing. I have taken this uh, from the Hindu. You can relate this topic with your general studies paper, paper 3, environment and conservation. So you all must be by now in by now aware, aware that uh, that the global warming that the global warming has been increasing and there have been many reports in fact ipcc which is a uh, international panel for climate change has uh, in fact hinted hinted that uh, that if we do not take action to prevent and mitigate the global warming and the climate change due to majorly due to the anthropogenic reasons that in then the world is going is not going to bring down the temperature 0 0.5 degree i mean sorry 1.5 degree celsius pre industrial level which was decided during the paris climate summit which was decided during the paris climate summit in the year 2015 now during the same summit during the same summit it was it was agreed that um, that the developed countries that the developed countries they are going to give 100 million dollars i mean sorry billion 100 billion dollars to the developing countries for financing the financing the projects which are aimed at mitigating the climate change and reducing its impact so the writer uh, is of the opinion that over the last few years, the developed countries, they have insisted upon the two points on the issue of the climate finance. The first one is to maintain their commitment to reaching the target of $100 billion in climate financing. This is, um, this is finance, pardon me uh, for the font. This is finance, a year for the developing countries. This was first promised in 2009 is close to being met. So this is the first uh, first thing that the developed countries have argued that the target is close to be to being met. The second thing that they view that mobilization of the private finance as as the critical component of climate financing. Now what is this mobilization of this private finance? It means it means funding of the technology, funding of the technology by the private by the private players for example for example the big corporations and the big technological corporations such as amazon facebook then we have got this spacex by elon musk uh, the company called tesla and etc etc so all these big corporations there these are the private corporations and their inclusion in the or and their participation in mitigating the climate change according to the writer is of utmost importance however however the writer because the title of the article is behind the smoke screen around the private climate financing article says that there are a lot of things that we need to understand when it comes to uh, financing the climate uh, the clim private climate financing so the writer says that mr john Kerry who is the U.S. Uh, Special Presidential Envoy for the Climate Change and uh, Mark Kearney. So these are the two people. This is Mark Kearney and this is John Kerry. So who is John Kerry? I mean Mark Kearney who is the current uh, United Nations Special Envoy on the Climate uh, Action and Finance and, the, and he's also the former governor of the Bank of England. They are the leading proponents of this view, which view that private developers and the private corporations have to finance the, have to finance the climate uh, mitigation and adaptation projects. On several of the occasions, Mr. Carey has said that the private sector can find solutions to climate change by funding the trillions which are needed for the global transition to the clean energy. Now, if in the past uh, one year, if you see that the developed countries, especially especially the United, uh, European Union they have been they have been moving or marching towards towards the towards the climate mitigation and they all have unveiled their strategy of net climate net carbon zero net carbon zero by by 2015 by 2015 right so they all have been progressing towards the mitigation of the climate change etc etc so you would you can see that there is a global transition from the conventional conventional source of power to the energy 
to the energy efficient and clean source of power to the energy efficient and clean source of power so the so mr carey he has pointed uh, pointed towards the private sector involvement in finding solutions to the climate change and thus he calls that trillions of the uh, trillions of the dollars which are needed to do so have to should come from the private sector when we speak of the global transition to the clean energy so mr carney has called for turning this billions in public capital into trillions in the private capital by scaling the blended finance blended finance means some part of it should be uh, should be uh, given by the government and some part of it would come from the private developers so catalyzing stand alone private capital flow and building the new market building the new market so we all are aware about uh, about this carbon credit system and this um, carbon trading etc so these are certain things which uh, these are certain things you know which you should understand that we already have certain sovereign fund for example india has a national uh, this climate change fund we have then there is a green climate fund then we have got um, uh, then we have got uh, this uh, you know global environment uh, facility gf then we have got small fund um, for the island nations etc so there is a plethora of funds but however these all funds need to be filled and therefore the finance that would come should either come from the government or or from the private sector however writer is focusing on the private sector involvement so writer says that for developing countries to shape their policies which are based on these optimistic views is very is clearly challenging so how should the developing countries respond to this right now we are have we have this question that what climate activities i mean what activities this climate finance fund so you see according to the latest biennial report of the unfcc you know there are several activities that can be funded by the climate finance even if it is coming from the private developers corporations multinational companies transnational companies or we speak of the public financing in either of the cases there are certain cases certain activities that needs to be focused upon for example the climate change resilience so india had this cdri strategy for the climate resilient infrastructure then energy efficiency so india so you know whatever the step that we are taking india is also moving in the same direction so when we speak of certain activities at the global level we need to understand the same activities from the national perspectives as well so when we speak of the climate change resilience that yes india does have many initiatives going on for the for the climate resilient infrastructure when we speak of the energy efficiency that india also has its program for energy efficiency going on then there is a sustainable agriculture so india has this climate climate resilient resilient agriculture so what this climate as resilient agriculture would be for the food security for the food security the vagaries of the monsoon the unpredictable monsoon and the flood and drought flash flood flash flood and flash drought etc they all pose threat to the secure food security especially so recently we saw that there is a russia ukraine war going on because of which the prices of the edible oil especially the sunflower oil it started to started to rise then there was um, there were because of the blockade that was created due to the war many of the countries in the sub saharan region etc they had to they had to face the uh, food grain crunch etc so in uh, in our daily current affairs also we had discussed the black sea grain initiative which was meant which was meant to kind of uh, which was meant to be an agreement between the russia and ukraine so as to allow the export of the wheat and other grains which are which are exported to the egypt and other sub saharan countries like sudan uh, south sudan etc etc so there the ongoing the geopolitical scenario um, is 
is sort of you know creating a confusion amongst the developing countries and the least developed countries as to where they stand when it comes to climate financing and as to where they stand when it comes to mitigating the climate change because if we see it from the perspective of the small island nation for example vanuatu island for example we have got snegal island we have got very small island uh, in the pacific ocean in melanesia polynesia and in uh, and in indian ocean and in atlantic ocean they they all Uh, are threatened by the sea level rise and if the if the developing countries and the developed countries do not do anything to mitigate and adapt to the climate change then the first then the first threat is to um then the first i mean the impact the first impact of the climate change is going to be faced by the small island nation and by those countries who have not contributed enough to this anthropogenic uh, led climate change and uh, let me take example of pakistan also recently in 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 past month pakistan also had seen the flood the devastating flood that it had seen and the country's uh, eco- precarious economic situation is um, is posing a survival threat to the na- to the public uh, i mean in the country and the united nations secretary Antonio Guterres also talked about that how such nations who have not contributed to the industrialization and who have not contributed enough to this anthropogenic uh, uh, carbon emission and the climate change are at the vulnerable and a very and at a very precarious position so therefore the writer is of the view that it is important that these private companies they fund these certain activities such as uh, renewable energies adaptation to the climate change sustainable transport climate change mitigation and conservation of the biodiversity there are of course many efforts being taken at the international level and at the national level for the conservation of the biodiversity but that's just not enough in fact in our in one of the editorials we had also talked about the technocratic uh, optimism and how it is insufficient to lead the adaptation to the climate change so therefore we do require the nature based solution we do require the private financing into those nature based solution into these activities which we have just discussed um when it comes to climate financing and when it also comes to mitigating the impact and adapting to the climate change so shortly before the 27th uh, cop now this cops when 27 is going on in egypt right now in egypt right now from sharm al sheikh which is one of the cities in um, egypt and we would also discuss the recently unveiled strategy by our uh, by our environment uh, minister at the cop 27 that how india is going to gradually step towards its aim of carbon neutrality by 2017 so if we look at uh, the unfcc cop 27 which began on november 6th uh, 2022 So the standing UNFCC standing committee on finance it had released a report on the progress that is made by the developed countries towards achieving the goal of mobilizing the 100 billion dollars per year which it was supposed to give to the developing countries for climate financing the report has made two things clear the first one that it is accepted that 100 billion dollar goal has not been achieved in 2020 and earlier efforts to mobilize the private finance by the developed countries has met with comprehensive failures so there these are the two things that the uh, that the report has pointed towards that first the 100 billion dollar the 100 billion dollar goal was has not been achieved and second thing that it has pointed out is that the private financing has met substantial substantial opposition and uh, according to the writer it has in fact failed so the hcf so the hcf report which is a standing committee on finance report relied ba- mainly on the oecd and the oxfam report for aggregate aggregate climate finance trend so these are the two sources that this hcf report relied on so oecd had claimed that the developed countries have mobilized 83 approximately 83 billion dollars in the climate finance in 2020 so 13 billion have been mobilized from the private finance and 1.9 uh, billion 
in the export credit and 68.3 billion dollars have come from the private i mean sorry uh, from the public uh, financing so this is the distribution of this 83.3 billion dollars of the funds that have been mobilized by the developed countries according to the oecd report please pardon me for this it is finance actually it is finance actually so the latest oxfam report ch challenges this finance with the claim that the actual value of the oecd claimed uh, climate assistance of um, 83.3 billion is only around 21 to 24.5 billion so if you look at uh, if you look at the title of this editorial i mean of this article then it talks about the shadiness behind uh, the private uh, climate financing and how much the developed countries have have mobilized and what they claim there is a discrepancy between what they have claimed they have mobilized and what according to the oxfam report is actually they have climate uh, they have mobilized so 83.3 billion dollars of claim according to the oecd report is false according to the report released by the oxfam uh, oxfam report so it says that the actual climate financing is only 21 to 24.5 billion dollars so oxfam values it is much lower if you if you look at the distinction between i mean if you if you try to compare the two figures then the oxfam value it is much lower as it discounts for the climate relevance of reported funds that that is funds actually targeting the climate action the climate relevant fund the funds which are actually in mitigating and adapting to the climate change right so climate finance relevance is also important and grant equivalence rather than cash face value that okay so suppose we have put in 10 dollar in a particular activity this is just an example suppose sub 10 dollar have been given what is the outcome so this outcome is more important than than the fund so if there is a there is not enough outcome if we have put in 10 dollars we should get outcome equivalent to the 10 dollars but if we are putting 10 dollars and we are not even getting outcome of outcome which is equivalent to the 1 1 dollar then obviously then obviously what there is, this is not climate relevant financing where we are putting our efforts into something that would not lead to the climate mitigation and adaptation so the oecd reports they have also been criticized for the lack of trans currency of information on mobilized private uh, finance in 2016 based on the oecd analysis the developed countries basically they had issued a road map this in in the year 2016 so remember in the in 2015 we had the paris agreement in under which the developed countries had agreed to mobilize 100 billion dollars and give it to the developing countries for the climate financing purpose so this was in the year 2016 that a road map was provided by the developed countries with forward looking projections of climate finance in 2020 so the road map which indicated that developed countries they were on track to meet the goal by 2020 so by 2020 they had to mobilize projecting of course it was it failed in 2020 we saw the covid-19 pandemic as well so the projecting that the public finance would reach 67 billion dollars by the remaining 33 billion uh, would be provided by the private so what they had thought that by 2020 60 would come from the public and 33 billion dollars would be provided by the would be mobilized by the pro, uh, by the private so 2020 oecd data however shows that the mobilization of the private climate finance has underperformed against the expectations of the developed countries falling short by the 60% points and um, it is only 13.1 billion as against the 33 billion as it was projected by the developed countries in the 2016 oecd report so the standing committee on finance report of the united uh, nations says that it is uncle unclear as to what extent this was due to a lower than expected potential to mobilize the private finance or to the relatively lower proportion of projects with mobilization potential in overall climate finance portfolio so basically the, the standing committee on the finance is not clear whether like what is the reason behind this lower mobilization so the standing committee on finance has pointed towards the two possible reasons the first is one 
that the that finance uh, the private financing is uh, has lower potential than the expected potential so either it is the lower potential of the private uh, private finance either it is the lower potential of the private finance or it is due to the relatively lower proportion of projection projects lower pro proportion of the projects so either it is the lower expectation low uh, potential or the lower proportion of the projects the projects which are involved in the climate mitigation and climate adaptation so what is the challenge for the low income countries now so basically developing countries are facing a long time challenge according to the according to the writer and they have been long for a very long time insisting on the significant portion of the climate finance should come from the public fund as pi private financing will not address their needs so the writer is talking about the writer is talking about basically that the developing countries demands that the financing for the climate mitigation and adaptation should be public because private are not going to put so much of efforts into mitigating the climate change and adapting to it so their needs and priorities can only be addressed if the financing is, is coming from the public rather than the private so the climate finance it has already remained uh, skewed towards the mitigation right finance towards bankable projects with clear revenue streams so like the un united nations standing committee on finance put pointed towards the lower proportion of the project the writer conveys the same thing that uh, the projects the the projects in which a uh, private developer would invest when it comes to the green energy or the clean energy is basically dependent upon the revenue that it is going to generate afterwards so the private financing is only towards the bankable projects like how much um, the project can be monetized and the revenue can be generated from that project so there is no clear uh, clear um, vision regarding the climate mitigation and the and the adaptation when it comes to the private financing so the adaptation basically it is unlikely to offer commercially profitable opportunities for the private financers therefore as therefore what does the uh, standing committee on finance of the united nations said that it is lower expectation or uh, lower expected potential right so potential lower than the expected so this is what uh, the writer is pointing towards the vulnerable the debt ridden and the low income countries with poor credit rating needs adaptation finance now like i gave the example of the small island nation for example vanuatu for example seychelles so these are small island and more vulnerable to the climate change so they require what they currently require is adaptation that how well they can adapt to the climate change situation situation for example if there is a sudden sea level rise so they need to build barriers they need to build uh, they need to preserve the mangrove structure they need to preserve the preserve what is known as the coral reefs so they need to preserve the coral reefs the barrier structure the mangroves and the environment and the ambiance and the uh, you know the, the basically the the whole environmental structure of the island so they need more adaptation rather than mitigation mitigation would come as a long term strategy but currently in the present scenario of the climate change their more their preference is more towards the adaptation when we speak of the vulnerable low income countries so they need to adapt more so the climate financing should should be more to the adaptation and according to the developing developing countries it should come more from the public so following the dismal failure to meet the 100 billion dollars uh, goal by 2020 the developed countries have pushed the target for achieving it to uh 2025 now this target which was supposed to be achieved by 2020 have been pushed to the have been pushed to 2025 so last year at cop 27 the developed countries they had come up with a finance delivery plan to meet the goal and again using the same again using the oecd report accounting framework and the 2016 road map in which they had discussed that how much private financing would come to the climate mitigation and adaptation and how much public financing would come for the climate mitigation and adaptation so this is what um, the developing developed countries at cop 26 glasgow last year had talked about that the goal would be met by uh, met in 
So the Standing Committee on Finance report it notes that when we compare the OECD reported data for the 2020 to the scenarios in the CFDP, which is uh, the Climate Finance Delivery Plan, while the aggregate total 83.3 billion matches the low end scenario for 2021, the mobilized private finance it has fallen short of 6% compared to the scenario which was estimated in the estimated by the OECD report. Further. In this scenario, both the public and the private finance segment would need to grow further by 21 and 22% in order to meet the 2023 low-end estimate of 101 billion. So whether this is possible or not, according to the writer, is a bit doubtful. So between 2019 and 20, the mobilized private finance, as reported by the OECD, had in reality fallen by the by 9%. So despite the attention grabbing headlines in the media that how the climate finance is being pushed uh, and the CVFDP progress report released two weeks ago, they have a very different story to tell. So according to the writer, this, that it's not a very optimistic scenario when it comes to the climate financing and when we speak of the goal that had been decided at the Paris Agreement that how the developed countries are going to help the least developed countries and the developing countries when it comes to the climate financing and how they were supposed to mobilize the $100 billion which they, which they failed to meet and the target has been pushed now by 2025. It notes that mobilizing private uh, climate finance it has proven to be a very to proven to be a challenging and a particularly it is limited to the adaptation. So there is a more inclination towards the adaptation, but not towards the mitigation because mitigation itself is a very long term strategy, and. Um, so further, it has been argued that developed countries and the multilateral developed banks they have emphasized that how the private finance. The mobilization of the private finance is important when it comes to the climate finance uh, strategies which would include the de-risking and creating enabling environments so that these and according to the writer all these efforts have not yielded any result at, at a large scale or at a scale which is going which is required to tap the significant potential of um, for the investment by the private sector and deliver on developed countries um, climate ambition. So assumption and the reality so what is how what has been assumed and what is the reality so basically there are further assumptions in the cfdp scenario that needs to be laid bare the first thing that it assumes that private public finance mobilization ratio starting from uh, 0 0.21 which was finalized uh, which was mobilized by the pri private finance and ending with 0 0.177 in 2025 with the share of activities with low mobilization potential rising from 30% in 2021 to 50% in 2021. So writer says that the private public finance mobilization basically it is going to it is uh, I mean it is going to be towards the activities with low mobilization potential with the share of activities that it's going to increase with low mobilization potential in going to increase from 30 percent to the to the 50 percent so what does this imply basically the composition of the private private i mean uh, sorry the public climate finance portfolios it is progressively going to change towards a larger share of activities with low to no private finance mobilization potential this includes finance for adaptation capacity building as grants for the least developed and small island developing countries thus in these scenarios financing the urgent adaptation needs of developing countries it's push, it is pushed further into the into the future so if i conclude you know if i'm going to summarize what the writer says in her article that basically the climate finance is going to be pushed towards those activities which are either low end which have low potential towards the climate mitigation which have low potential towards the prime crime uh, climate mitigation or these finance would include for the adaptation rather than the mitigation which is going to be a long-term strategy for the capacity building and of course for the grants which are provided by the developed countries to the least developing countries. So therefore addressing the urgent climate finance uh, needs of the developing countries it cannot be left to the mercy of the false promises of the trillions of US dollars in mobilized uh, climate finance. Many of the activities uh, needing finances they have little or perhaps no direct mobilization potential. Right? So writer wants to say that 
the promises which are made by the developed countries and the big private corporations they are false promises because the activities the majorly uh, the activities in activities in which the money is going on it either has no mobilization potential or very low mobilization potential so the report by the scf it has rightly concluded that the mobilization of the private finance as a means of achieving the 100 billion goal should not come at the expense of or involve a trade off in addressing uh, the needs of um, developing countries the grant based on concessional uh, concessional international public uh, climate finance will continue to play the key role in addressing the needs and uh, the priorities of uh, developing countries especially in the face of growing challenges due to extreme weather food and energy crisis right so according to the writer this grant based and this concessional international private uh, sorry public climate finance uh, by the world bank uh, by adb etc etc they are going to play a very they are going to play an important role when it comes to addressing the um priorities the needs and the priorities of the developing uh, countries especially when we speak of the extreme weather food and the energy crisis so this is a very small part which i have taken uh, from the hindu newspaper and um, this talks about that about the strategy india has unveiled at ongoing cop 27 at shram al sheikh in egypt that how india is going to basically it is going to be a long term strategy that how india is going to transit from carbon emission to low emission pathway and finally to achieve carbon neutrality by 2070 so this is one of the goal that prime minister prime minister our country's prime minister had unveiled at cop 26 at cop 26 glasgow so this was the last year that he had unveiled and now and now our our environment minister had unveiled the strategy at cop 27 at cop 27 to achieve one of the goals of panchamrit that is to carbon neutrality by 2070 so let's discuss a little bit um, a um, little bit about the key milestones you know of the strategy the first we have the national hydrogen hydrogen mission that was launched in the year 2021 and how india is going to become a green hydrogen hub so what you have to understand so you have to prepare two topics what is the green hydrogen because there are several types of hydrogen the gray hydrogen the green hydrogen the blue hydrogen etc so you should be thorough with uh, the difference between these type of hydrogen it actually the difference is dependent upon the uh, upon the process by which the hydrogen gas is generated then uh, you should be knowing the national hydrogen mission at least three fold increase in the nuclear capacity by 2032 now if you see that nuclear energy is considered as a clean energy however there are several risk involved in it but india needs to build its nuclear capacity for clean energy so as to so as to lower the carbon intensity and the energy intensity of the country and to lower the lower the lower its dependence on the conventional fuels such as natural gas fossil fuels and and coal achieving the ethanol blending target of 20% by 2025 so currently india's blending rate um, ethanol blending rate stands lower than 2% however india had the 5% target then we gradually shifted the target to 20% by 2025 so these are certain ways by which india is going to transit towards the clean and the green energy minimize i mean maximizing the use of electric vehicles increase the public transport so as to minimize the private vehicles and private transportation so that we have lower carbon emission we have to increase the climate finance to be provided by the developed nation so currently just now we had discussed this uh, article of the climate financing and this is one of the one of the strategy that how Uh, how the climate finance from the developed nation has to be mobilized so, so this is going to be one point then of course there has to be a long term strategy so as to keep the keep the uh, temperature rising below 2 degree celsius and ambitiously 1.5 degree celsius by the century and from the pre industrial levels which was decided at the paris agreement so that's it for today thank you so much for watching tarun ias and if you do if you require pdf and uh, other requisite material for your upsc preparation then you can go to our telegram channel and the link is given in the description below thank you so much have a nice day